Hey, what's up everybody? I'm gonna do a quick little tutorial today on tonal balance control from Isotope. It's a plugin that I pretty much constantly use and it helps me get the tonal balance of my tracks in order and helps me mix and master um, and make sure everything is balanced and gonna come through well on most systems. So I've got a few tracks loaded up in here. First of all, let's pull up the plugin. So when you pull it up, it looks like this. I like to use it on fine mode. It's a little more accurate. Bass heavy preset. Basically, this is a target for our tonal balance. And I'll play a track here for a second. <laughs> So basically what this is doing is it's averaging the tones over like 10 seconds or something and it's not based on the amplitude at all. So we could play this back at a much quieter volume. Oh wait, that's the wrong track. And we'll get the same results. So that's super useful for mixing because you don't you're not comparing your target based on amplitude like to master tracks and stuff so basically it allows you to kind of make sure your track is totally in check without any regards to what volume tracks actually playing at whereas if we bring in like the ozone eq analyzer and we play it at zero and then play it back way quieter we get a way lower reading so it's you can't really use it as a target for a song that isn't mastered to compare it to songs that are mastered so now i'm going to talk about kind of where i like to sit in tonal balance control for down tempo songs um that are bass heavy i really love this mr bill song um off his last album apophenia and it goes pretty heavy on the sub bass as you can see it goes over what the target is which i think is okay sometimes the only thing about that is you're not going to be able to get as loud of a master if you are gonna go heavier on the sub bass but i really like how it sounds i'm not too big on the super smash loud masters anyways so for a lot of my stuff i'll shoot a little bit over the bass but I always like to keep the low mids pretty much closer to the bottom line usually and all the way through the mids and then come back up towards the top line for the highs typically. But as long as you're within the target, it's usually chill and sometimes you can go without the target. I'll play a few different songs by different artists through here so we can kind of see um, the difference. There's that Bill song. Here's an odd song. So you can see that one's kind of a lot more rounded out um, and safe. Here's a tipper down tempo song. And usually I don't use this on like intros, outros parts where the, the meat of the song isn't playing because you can kind of just ignore the rules a little bit for those parts. You can see the song's a little bit meatier in the mids, especially in down tempo, I'd say, you know, like, it's a guideline. You don't have to stick to it hardcore. Let's try a banger by Tipper. So you can see that's very controlled. The mids are very flat. The sub's a little lower because he really pushes these masters hard. He's getting them really loud, so... You can sacrifice a little sub bass to get a little more volume out of your masters. Um, and here's a track that I made, and, and with this one I'll kind of show you how we can 
kind of mess it up. A lot of times I'll get stuff to be mastered and it will be, you know, kind of like this. I see that sort of thing a lot. A lot of people don't have a good sub bass reference in their studio, so they'll overcompensate or undercompensate a lot. So a lot of times I end up having to EQ down a bunch to get it within the lines. Yeah, so it's a very useful tool, but something I am going to mention is just because your track is tonally balanced does not mean that your mix is good. You could still have everything clashing in the mix, just everything completely in the way of each other and get a good reading on tonal balance. But tonal balance is still very important to having a good mix. Um, but it's kind of like one of the more like the last steps. You still have to make sure that everything is sitting right in your mix, has its own place carved out, isn't interfering with the other elements. So that's something to think about too. But I find this tool really useful. It's in Ozone 8, which I think you might be able to get for free now since they put out Ozone 9. Not sure about that, but it's a great tool to have. I use it. I always have it on my master channel when I'm mixing. I check every master I do with it. Um, can't recommend it enough, really. It's it's great. Um, and I think that's really everything I wanted to cover. So thanks for listening, and I hope this helps you out.